Over the years of working with students, I've noticed that everyone seems to have a different method for work rate questions. I'm here to give you my method, which of course I think is the best method, but you can make up your mind. If you like it better than the method you've got, brilliant. If not, you can stick to your method. Of course, if you don't have any method now, then this is gonna be hopefully really helpful. A few years ago, I taught using a different method, but now I like this method a lot better because it gets to the fundamentals of what is work rate. The truth is everyone finds work rate kind of hard. Most people either use complex equations or tables, matrices, um, or sometimes formulas. But I want to boil work rates down to two simple truths. And if you believe and can use these two simple truths about work rate, every work rate question that you'll see in the GMAT or GRE shouldn't be that hard. And as usual, I got a work rate question in my real GRE, so I can reassure you this does come up. In fact, after I teach you my work rate method, the first question we're gonna do is an official ETS question. And then after that, one that I've made up myself of an extremely hard level. So you can really test yourself to see if you understand work rates. So what's the first of those two truths that I was talking about? When we're working together, you can't add the time that we take individually to get the time that we take when working together. But you can add the rate that we are operating at individually to get the combined rate. Or to simplify, you can't add times, you can add rates. Why is that so important? Well, say that I take two hours to change a light bulb and my neighbor takes three hours to change a light bulb. I know, we're not very good at changing light bulbs. And then we try and work together to change one light bulb. It wouldn't make any sense to say that we take two hours plus three hours, we take five hours to change one light bulb. How can that be true if I can do it in two hours just on my own? So no, you can't add times like that. But you can add rates. The real question is, how do we find the rate I'm going at and the rate my neighbor's going at so that we can add those rates? Here comes the second major truth about work rates. The time you take and the rate you're going at is a reciprocal of each other. In other words, if I take two hours to change a light bulb, if I find the reciprocal of two, that gives me the rate at which I change a light bulb. Reciprocal means flipping the fraction. You might say, but two is not a fraction. Well, two is two over one. We can express an integer like two as a fraction just by putting it over one. So if the time I take is two over one, then my rate is one over two. In other words, I change half a light bulb per hour. I take two hours to change one light bulb. The reciprocal of two is a half, so I can change half a light bulb per hour, and that is my rate. So what's my neighbor's rate? He or she can change one light bulb in three hours. So the reciprocal of three is one over three. So their rate is a third of a light bulb per hour. The three hours becomes one over three light bulbs per hour. We've converted both of our times into rates. And why did we do that? Because of the first truth, that we can add rates, but we can't add times we can now add our two rates together to get our combined rate. My rate is half a light bulb per hour. My neighbor's rate is a third of a light bulb per hour. Adding them up, a half plus a third, I believe is five sixths. And that's our combined rate. We get five sixths of a light bulb done per hour. But that doesn't quite answer the question. How long do we take to change one light bulb? Can you steal the glory? If five over six is our combined rate, what's our combined time? What's the time we take when we're working together? It would be the reciprocal of that. Again, to get from a rate 
to a time or a time to a rate, you do the reciprocal. So if our combined rate is five over six, our combined time is six over five hours in this case, six fifths of an hour, which is one hour and a fifth or one hour and 12 minutes because a fifth of an hour is 12 minutes. That's how long we would take working together to change that one light bulb. Okay, that's enough of a warm up. Time for this official ETS question that you should be able to see on your screen. This is actually how they could ask this topic in the test for the GRE. For the GMAT, very, very similar, basically the same. Not gonna read the whole thing out, but basically machine A takes 10 minutes to produce K liters and machine B takes 15 minutes to produce K liters. How long would it take both machines working together to produce K liters. You can pause the video and attempt this question yourself or just wait to hear how I'm gonna do it using our special trick. First things first, don't be put off by the fact that we're working on creating K liters. Just define that as like one light bulb. The whole K is just a distraction. Just define your job as being K liters. Even if they'd said 100 K liters, we define that one big job as just being one job or one light bulb. That's the job we need to do. We've got one machine that takes 10 minutes to do that. The other machine takes 15 minutes. And our job is to use the trick we've just learned to work out the time they would take working together. As we mentioned, we can't add the times. We can't do 10 minutes plus 15 minutes. We have to first convert them into rates. The 10 minutes becomes one over 10 per minute. The 15 minutes becomes one over 15 per minute. One over 10 plus one over 15, I can let you do. But if it was me, I'd create the common denominator of 30. And let's see if I can do that in my head. Three out of 30, two out of 30, that would be five out of 30 is the combined rate. I recommend you label that just so it's clear that that's of the combined rate, not the combined time. Five over 30, which by the way simplifies to one over six, that's our combined rate, one over six. So what's our combined time? We would do the reciprocal. If our combined rate is one over six, our combined time is six over one, which is just six. And the units here is minutes. So we take or those two machines, A and B, take six minutes to do the job, which in this case is K liters. Don't worry about the K liters. It basically takes us six minutes to do the job required. Now, for the vast majority of students, that's the kind of difficulty of the questions that you want to get right. The following question that I've made up is for those pushing for the really extreme scores, like above a 165 or above a 700 on the GMAT. So here's a question for people like you who want to go to the extreme ends of work rate. You can see the question on the screen and you can see how it complicates the normal situation. Instead of just working on one job, we now have to work on multiple jobs and fractions of a job. That's what makes this question harder. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it boils down to this. Dania takes two hours to paint half a wall, orally, takes three hours to paint two walls. If Dania starts painting on her own for three hours and then is joined by Aurelie, for how long will they, will they now be working together if their goal is to paint three walls? Job number one, find out the actual time that each of these two people take to paint one wall. Otherwise, we're all over the place. If Dania takes two hours to paint half a wall, how long does she take to paint one wall? That would be four hours. We're gonna define it by one wall. She takes four hours to paint one wall. If Orly takes three hours to paint two walls, how long does she take to paint one wall? Three over two hours. I'd rather you write three over two than 1.5 just because decimals aren't very helpful in calculations, but fractions are much easier to use. Okay, so Dania takes four hours, 
and Aurelie takes three over two hours. So what are their rates? It would be the reciprocal as we've seen. So a quarter of a wall per hour for Dania and two over three walls per hour for Aurelie. Let's add this up to get their combined rate. A quarter plus two thirds, if I'm doing that in my head, I believe is 11 twelfths. You might want to check that, but 11 twelfths would be what I think is their combined rate. I've just added the fractions, two thirds plus a quarter. If their combined rate is 11 twelfths, their combined time, the time they take to paint a wall, would be 12 over 11. That's how many hours they would take working together to paint a wall. But it's not so simple, is it? We don't just need to paint one wall, we need to paint three walls, and Dania's already got some of the job done herself. So how many walls are left to be painted? Well, Dania works for three hours, and remember her rate was a quarter of a wall per hour. If her rate is a quarter of a wall per hour, then in three hours, she'll get done three quarters of a wall. So instead of them working together to paint three walls, Dania's already done three quarters of a wall. So that leaves two and one quarter walls left for them both to work together on painting. Two and one quarter of a wall, which converts to the fraction nine over four. They have nine over four walls, if you like, left to paint, and it takes them 12 over 11 hours to paint a single wall. This is clearly not gonna work out to be a simple integer, which is why the question asks you to write your answer as a fraction and why this would be such a difficult question. But this is our final challenge. It takes them 12 over 11 hours to work together and paint a single wall. So how long would it take them to paint nine over four walls? Well, we times that by nine over four. 12 over 11 is the time to paint one wall. So to paint nine over four walls, we do 12 over 11 times nine over four, which if you simplify on both sides, you should get to over 11 hours is the time that it would take just working together after Dania has already painted three quarters of a wall. And that would be your answer. That was a really, really tough question. So well done if you followed it all the way through to the end. And please do rewind and rewatch if any part of that was complicated. The earlier examples would be much more typical of the GRE and mid-level GMAT. So don't stress too much if that last one was super hard. At the end of the day, I was trying to hammer home the two core truths that you can't add the times you take when you work together, but you can add the rates you're going at. And rates and times are always reciprocals of one another. And that is how you conquer work rate questions without a formula and without a complex table. I really hope this video demystified work rates just a bit for you and gave you a lot more confidence at tackling not only the medium level work rate questions, but even the hardest ones they can throw at you. As always, if it did, leave a like, leave a comment, I read them all and see you very soon.